Have you ever been working out when you get a hamstring cramp? I know I have a lot. It's the worst, I hate that. Or do you ever wake up in the middle of the night with calf cramps or maybe in the morning you're doing your morning stretch, pointing your toes and you get cramping on the bottoms of your feet? Or do you get pain when you try to lift your arm to the side or in front of you? Hey guys, I'm Alicia from mobilitymastery.com and in this video, I'm gonna let you in on a super important anatomical rule that is often overlooked, but it shouldn't be because when you understand this, you can become like a super sleuth for figuring out why pain is happening in a lot of pain patterns. You're gonna figure out why cramping happens, like I talked about if your hamstrings cramp or you get cramping on the bottoms of your feet, and why pain happens through specific ranges of motion like lifting your arm overhead or to the side. All of this has to do with something called reciprocal inhibition. And I'm gonna unpack that in a moment. But what I'm about to share with you comes from personal experience working with people in pain in my private practice since 2008. And I've been able to get people out of pain usually in one to three sessions. And I've used what I know about reciprocal inhibition in the majority of cases to figure out why pain happens and create a database of what I call pain patterns. So I know what most pain in the body is coming from and then I can fix it super fast. So if you understand reciprocal inhibition, you're gonna be able to do the same thing too. If you're excited to learn this information and use it either for yourself or your clients, if you're a personal trainer or massage therapist, give me a thumbs up and share in the comments below. So what is reciprocal inhibition? Well, it describes the process of muscles on one side of a joint relaxing to accommodate contraction of the muscles on the opposite side of that joint. <laughs> what does this mean? Well, in order to contract my biceps, my triceps have to stretch and vice versa. If I want to contract my triceps, then my biceps have to stretch. In order to contract my hamstrings, my quads have to stretch. In order to contract any muscle in the body, their opposite has to stretch or relax. Now, the important thing to understand here is that within this umbrella of this anatomical rule called reciprocal inhibition, we gotta understand this one key piece of data. Uh, within muscles are something called muscle spindles. And muscle spindles have a job of detecting muscle length and relaying that information back to the brain so the brain can determine what action needs to happen from there, given what our body is doing in whatever space we're in and how we're moving. So there's a lot of science and anatomy we could get into here, but I'm actually more interested in helping you truly understand this concept in everyday terms and how it affects us on a daily basis. So the important thing to understand here is that nerves are communicating between our body and our brain all the time. And the brain's job, one of the brain's main jobs, is to detect potential threats to the system and then manage those threats or hopefully take care of them. So whatever is being communicated from our bodies to our brains has a profound effect on what happens next because the brain is gonna determine based on that information if we're safe or unsafe. And if we're unsafe, the brain is gonna choose any number of techniques to try to keep us safe. So why does this matter when it comes to things like hamstrings cramping or glutes that stop firing? Well, if the brain detects that your quadriceps are too tight to stretch safely without danger of tearing, then the brain's job is to get you out of that stretch as fast as possible. And the best way to do that is to actually give you a cramp or a pain signal in the opposite muscle of the one that's being asked to stretch. So in this case, the hamstrings. And this has something to do with the stretch reflex under this umbrella of reciprocal inhibition. But you don't need to memorize the science, you just need to know how it's affecting your body and what to do about it. So if you've experienced any of the things I mentioned today, then I guarantee you, you did what your brain wanted you to do. For example, if you got a hamstring cramp when you were working out, usually this is gonna happen when you're doing something like an acute hamstring curl, for example. What did you do? 
I'm gonna guess you did what you're hardwired to do because we all are, which is to lengthen that hamstring out. You probably, ah, you know, took it out of the, that contracted position, lengthened it, maybe jostled it around or even took it in, into an even further stretch and tried to get it to chill out and relax. But here's the thing. Your brain wasn't trying to tell you to stretch your hamstring. It wanted you to put your tight quad back into its tight place where it's safe from being overstretched. So what most of us do when we get pain in a muscle uh, or a cramping in a muscle or spasms or anything like that is we tend to think that that spasming or cramping muscle or the muscle that's giving us pain is the problem. And we go to that muscle and we beat it up or we dig into it or we beg our massage therapist to dig in there, right? Like how many of you have begged your massage therapist to dig into your glutes because you think they're too tight because they're not firing or you have back pain or any number of issues like that? I know that's happened to me a long time ago and I've learned my lesson on that one and I've stopped doing that because the thing is that is not going to solve the actual problem. So to t take care of the problem, you have to go to the opposite muscle and stop going to the muscle that's cramping or in pain. And by the way, the cramping that you get is really just the first sign that something is dysfunctional. And if you don't take care of the problem, which remember is not the muscle that's cramping, then you could end up down the road with something far more serious like a tear or a pulled muscle or any number of pain issues from back pain and hip pain to plantar fasciitis, knee pain and shoulder pain, etc. So this brings us to what do we do about it? Well, it's really quite simple and I've already said it a couple times in this video. We have to stop going to the muscle that's hurting or cramping and go instead to its opposite and release the fascia there and or stretch that muscle. Now, of course, if you're on my channel, you probably know I'm a huge fan of effective fascial release and I'm also a fan of safe stretching. So that means something like a PNF stretch or a gentle stretch. So to use the examples I gave in this video, which are just a couple, really this rule can affect anything from head to toe and there are hundreds of examples out there. But if you have hamstring cramps, for example, you need to go to your quads or your quad hip flexors and release those or stretch them. If you have glutes that aren't firing, you need to go to your quad hip flexors or hip flexors stretch and or release those. If you get cramping on the bottoms of your feet, you need to release your tibialis anterior or your perineals. If you have pain through a range of motion, that's a kind of a whole other topic. I have a video on that. We'll link to it here for you. So I'd love to know what actually brought you to this video. Do you have any of the issues I mentioned? Hamstring cramps, cramping on the bottoms of your feet, or pain through a range of motion, or maybe glutes not firing? Comment below and let me know what brought you here and what you're going to do about taking care of the root issue. And now that you know why things like cramping happen in certain muscles, or pain through a range of motion, or glutes being inhibited, I want to give you one powerful tool you can use to address the top two things I mentioned in this video. And that would be hamstrings cramping or hamstring tears or pulled hamstrings or glutes not firing. These are two issues that I see so often in my private practice and people write me almost every day begging me to tell them what to do for glutes that aren't firing. And my number one go-to for both of these issues is to do a powerful fascial release kinetics fascial release technique for the quads and the quad hip flexors. So I want to give you that technique. You can click the link below this video and get instant access. I'll walk you through how to do it. And then I would love to hear how it works for you. So make sure to come back to this video and tell us all how you feel after doing it. If you like this video, then of course, give us a thumbs up. I'd appreciate it. And share below what your favorite tip from this video was. If you're new here, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell so you get notified for new videos. They go out every single week. As always, I hope you're learning to trust your body so you can adventure through life with confidence. See you next time.